Hey everybody, my name's Johan, and recently I've just returned from hosting our Jaguars of the Pantanal Tour. Now, before we get into that, um, safari season is well and truly in full flow with pretty much all the guys out in the office. So I'm sure you're going to see a lot more of these trip reports going forward, and I hope you guys enjoy them. So let's chat about the, the Pantanal. This is, this is my second time uh, visiting Brazil. Um, and the first time I've sort of gone later on in the year during the dry season. Now, bearing in mind that this year, as you probably would have seen on social media and in other news, there have been quite a lot of fires, uh, more sort of towards the southern part of the Pantanal. But it was very dry, very, very dry. But that makes for phenomenal game viewing. And, you know, during the, the seven nights that we spent in Port de Joffrey, we encountered over 52 Jaguar sightings. That's right, 52 in seven days, so that's 14 boat trips. So we were averaging, you know, pretty much three, four per boat trip um, every single day, which is quite phenomenal. Now, before we get into the, the sightings and stuff, let's just chat to you kind of the logistics and how to get there. Now, most of the international flights will take you into Sao Paulo, and then from Sao Paulo, there's about a two-hour flight then into Cuiabá, which is kind of the capital of that Mato Grosso area. And we will all sort of get together as a group the night before, staying in the Grand um, Odari Hotel. And this is a, a great place, like I mentioned, to kind of sit and chat about the kind of expectations for the week. And um, before then, the next morning, we start driving on the Transpantanera Road into, um, into Porto Joffrey. Yeah, that's about a kind of five and a half, six hour drive. And as with the, like a lot of the safaris I host, I like the fact that you can drive in because it does give you a good idea of exactly where you are in relation to civilization, if you want to call it that. Um, so we got to uh, Porto Joffrey just sort of around about lunchtime. The group got together, we had lunch, um, and then in the afternoons, you head out on quite an early boat trip in the afternoon. So we were leaving at about 2.30 um, in the afternoons. It is very hot during that time. But this is a fantastic time of the year if you want to see jaguars. As I mentioned, also with it being very dry and being very hot, these animals come down to the water. And also there was lots of beaches um, because the river was quite low. So imagine now with these steep banks, if you're going in the rainy season or when the river is very high, the jaguars can only really walk along the top of the bank, which you know that's where the majority of your forests are. So trying to get good sightings, you know, when the river is very high is quite tricky. So you want to be there kind of when the river is low, when it's dry. But just keep in mind that it is very hot. There is no roof on the boats. Uh, we, we do have umbrellas to, to take with. But, yeah, it is what it is. And you, But, you know, if you're photographing jaguars and things, um, as much as we did, the heat, you don't really think about it. It's, you're focusing more on kind of what's in front of you. The highlights, it, it's going to be almost impossible to, um, to pick out one particular thing during the, during the week. I mean, if I just think back now, our afternoon we started off with a mom, uh, a female jaguar with, uh, with two cubs, which, I mean, that was within the first hour of our, our first afternoon. And then she ended up catching a iguana, which, I mean, we could not believe what was happening in front of us, you know, seeing this jaguar walking towards us with the um, iguana in the mouth, the beautiful green colors, and then also the interaction between mom and the two cubs. Now, this was the first time for me to see um, cubs kind of, I mean, they weren't really small cubs, they were sort of sub-adults, but it was the first time to see these kind of cats uh, interact with, um, with, with their youngsters, and that was, that was phenomenal to see. Um, the rest of the week, I mean, we had a, a tapir and jaguar together. We, funny story, I was actually, we saw this tapir shortly after our jaguar sighting. And we were all photographing this tapir. None of us realized that there was actually a jaguar in the foreground. It was only afterwards, looking at the photos, that we saw this jaguar, which, you know, that's probably one of the beauties about photography is sometimes you're so focused on a certain species. It's only afterwards that you find sort of more of the story in your frame. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Jaguar sightings, like I mentioned, you know, chatting to Ricardo, who's our local guide um, and 
operator in, in Brazil, he reckons it was probably one of the best weeks that he's ever had in the Pantanal. And bearing in mind that he's been there for sort of over 20 years, um, starting this Jaguar habituating uh, process. But yeah, I mean, we had, it was also, again, it was the first time to see Jaguars hunting. Um, and we had numerous individuals where they start off walking along the top of the banks, scanning sort of through these kind of um, hyacinth and almost like these floating grasses that you get in the river. Looking for caiman, looking for capybara. Um, so it was amazing to see them kind of going from the banks and then entering the water, swimming, and actually really sort of searching through every clump of uh, thickets, if you want to call it that, on the river, looking for these caiman and, um, and capybara. Now, we probably followed for about four days, um, followed these jaguars swimming in the water, hunting, actively hunting, but, you know, either missing or just not finding any food sources. So that's something that you kind of got to bear in mind that, you know, I suppose like any cat when, they, when they're hunting, you've got to be patient, you've got to trust your local guides, um, spend some time out there and, yeah, just put the odds in your favor, I suppose. Finally, I think on, it was uh, on our fifth day, we, we were only three boats. We were in this little channel, again, watching this uh, female walking up and down the banks, swimming, and eventually she found this, this caiman. Now, when she jumped in initially, we all thought that she'd missed because between the grasses and stuff, you couldn't really see that much. It was only when we saw all the splashes and stuff, and eventually this female jaguar picked her head up and had this massive caiman in her mouth. I mean, I couldn't believe the size of this thing. It was, it was phenomenal. And what also really impressed me, it was quite amazing to see, is just how quickly this jaguar killed this caiman. It, it was phenomenal. You would think, you know, something that size, there would be more of a fight, more of a, uh, a wrestle between the two. But I think it just shows that sort of strength in the jaws of those jaguars is Truly, truly spectacular and, um, yeah, absolutely amazing to to witness. We also had another, um, it was on our last day, which it was very difficult to see. There was um, capybara with uh, with four youngsters. Um, and eventually, you know, with these small capybara, it's only a matter of time before, you know, jaguars eventually get them. Because they were also in an area where we'd seen jaguars quite a lot uh, during the week. And unfortunately, unfortunately um, during the last afternoon, um, this female jaguar managed to catch two of the little babies. It was incredible to witness, of course, you know, seeing we, we saw her going into the grass and, you know, clearly picking up on the scent of these, of these youngsters. But then it was almost like a scene out of Jurassic Park, you know, with the grass moving, the sounds that you, you could hear the, um, the baby squealing, the, um, the baby capybara. This grass shaking, and then all of a sudden, this female jaguar appeared on the beach, playing with this um, with this little capybara. Like I mentioned, it's never easy to to see something like this, but it was incredible to witness. And you know, speaking to our guides afterwards, they reckon that she had cubs hidden in the um, in those thickets as well. So she was probably just maybe trying to to stun the baby capybara, and then take it to her cubs um, and teach them how to how to kill it. So we didn't see that part, unfortunately. But, I mean, that scene on the beach was just absolutely spectacular. I think from a, from a photographic point of view, you know, we had every single day, it was just amazing sighting after the next. You know, we had jaguars walking on the beach. We had jaguars mating. We had the kills, like I, like I mentioned. We had jaguars sitting on, um, like, little stumps in the, in the water. We had jaguars jumping. It, um, it really was spectacular. I don't think we could have really seen anything else from a Jaguar point of view than we did that week. It was absolutely spectacular. One of the other highlights, uh, which I would never thought I'd ever see in my life, was seeing a maned wolf. Now, some of you might not even, might never have heard of this animal. I surely, I mean, I've, I've heard of it um, in the past. I've seen some photos, but it was never even on my radar to think, you know, this is potentially something to to see in in the Pantanal. And we were cruising on um, one of the rivers um, in the afternoon. It was I can remember it was very hot. And as we were cruising along, we just saw this 
funny shape coming sort of from the top of the bank coming down to the, to the to the river and it was this main wolf i mean uh, we all snapped away as much as we could we would have been happy with a, a one or two minute sighting and just getting a glimpse of it but this uh, main wolf came down to the river it had a drink in front of us i mean we must have had it for probably 10 15 minutes it was absolutely phenomenal um seeing this this uh quite a weird looking creature it's almost like a half sort of brown hyena art wolf type um, type animal ricardo again our guide who's um, who's been there for, for many many years this was only his second time ever in the pantanal to see a main wolf and our boat driver alan it was his first time to to see this um, amazing sight in front of us so yeah like i mentioned absolutely incredible incredible week um you know, I think people often sort of wonder, you know, what are the chances of, of seeing the Jaguars? I think if you're going in, in the dry season, sort of August, September, and probably into October as well, like I mentioned, it is very hot. Your, your chances are really, really good. Now, another thing that people have asked as well is how many boats do you get there and does it get busy? And to be honest with you, the answer is yes. You, you can get a lot of boats um, in certain sightings, especially... I remember in one of the channels called the Black Channel, there there was a female with uh, with two cubs, I think it was, and they had killed the uh, killed the caiman, and they were there for probably about three days. So it was a, a kind of a guaranteed sighting that they're going to um, be there. The visual wasn't great, so I mean we we stopped in there once or twice, but there were, I think the most boats we had was like 14, 15 boats. So you can get really busy sightings like that. But the, on the plus side, you know, we knew there were lots of other Jaguars we can go and find. So we would leave those busy sightings and then, you know, often have Jaguar sightings either, either to ourselves or, you know, have one or two other boats um, in those sightings with us. One of the things that really impressed me, though, about how they operate in, um, in the Pantanal is they're very respectful of the Jaguars in particular. You know, so if they're trying to cross the cross the river which they often do the boats will give them space enough space to kind of um for them to do their thing and they also they don't block block them off so you know if a jaguar is, is crossing the river you can't go and park sort of in front of it a lot of the times also the the jaguars will use the current so they'll go downstream along the banks like i mentioned you know looking under those um the water hyacinth and under those water grasses looking for caiman and capybara, the guys will also then give them space um, to move in. So that's something that I found that was, um, that was very sort of uh, refreshing to see. Also, one of the rules is if you're the first boat that finds a Jaguar and you park in a certain position, other boats can't come and park in front of you. They have to kind of form a line going back. Now, you know, if you get a Jaguar that's kind of swimming downstream, if the front boat, uh, if it kind of swims past you, you then loop around and fall in the back of the queue again. So I think it's a system that works really well. I, like I mentioned, I was very impressed with how ethical the guys were and you know, giving the animals space. So that is definitely something um, hats off to all the, all the guys in, um, in the Pantanal for, you know, for being respectful like that and, and um, you know, just giving the animals space. From a photographic point of view, and um, more importantly from a video point of view, it is quite difficult, um, especially you know, if you're filming uh, with, a, with a, a camera, not with your phone. You've got to bear in mind that when you're in a boat, the boat does move around quite a bit, you know, especially if there's other boats, other fishermen going past you. It creates a wake, and then it can be very, very challenging to photograph and video from the boat. What I found is... Um, with a lot of the, the videos, you know, with the newer cameras uh, on, your, on your iPhones, iPhone 15 and 16, and I think the 14 has got it as well. There is that action mode that you can activate when you're taking videos, and that just stabilizes the videos really, really well. Of course, you're not going to get super close-ups that you would, you know, if you're filming with your camera. But remember, that the closer you are, the more that, that movement gets exaggerated. So it is quite a challenge uh, from a, a filming point of view. From um, shooting stills, um, what we found is to just, especially when the animal's hunting and kind of when the boat's moving and repositioning the whole time, just to have a super fast shutter speed, uh, something like 1250, 1600 upwards, 
and that kind of helps uh, kind of counterbalance that camera shake that you might get from from being in the boat. There are times, you know, when a jaguar is uh, stationary or when it's when it's feeding or you know just lying on the on the banks that you can put out anchor, and then it gets a lot easier that you can then rest your camera on the side of the of the boat, maybe on a on a life jacket to get a nice low angle. Then you can you know shoot at slower shutter speeds and your camera is a lot more stable then you don't have that wake and that boat moving around. So that was just kind of sort of some of the challenges that that we found. Um, we uh, didn't have any uh, tripods or monopods or anything like that on the on the boat because again you know often if you're on the boat and the boat's moving and they they have to kind of move the boat forward and and, and back constantly especially with the, against the current that engine motor being on you know with a monopod and a tripod there's still a bit of vibration on the boat and then through your your monopod or your tripod as well so i mean i also think it takes up quite a bit of space uh, i did see a lot of boats um that, that use tripods and monopods i just found you know it's it's a lot easier to to shoot handheld and um yeah that, that's kind of my my personal preference from a lens point of view, uh, I think you know if you have something in that 400 mil range, 400, 500 mil range, really, really good. But also something a little bit wider, like a 70 to 200, I found came in um, very helpful, especially if you want to shoot some some nice sort of landscape type images where you've got the jaguar on the beach with the river behind it. I found uh, it's sort of that mid range camera works really, really well. As far as wide angles go, I mean, you probably could go with a, like 24 to 70 or something just to um, to photograph some of the landscapes from the river. But I didn't kind of uh, go down that route on, on this particular trip. I took some photos with, with my phone, but I didn't really feel like I needed a, a super wide angle lens um, during, our, during our time in the, in the Pantanal. Um, another thing, if you're enjoying photographing birds, I think the Pantanal is absolutely amazing for that. I don't think I've ever been in a place that had so many bird species and just the quantity of birds is, is, um, is unbelievable. So definitely a destination um, if you enjoy photographing birds. They've also got a, a bird feeder now at the, at the hotel that we stay at. So you, on our last morning, we actually took some time and photographed some of the, the toucans. It's a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, just bear in mind that it is from a bird feeder. So, you know, you, you do have some artificial sort of logs and stuff um, in some of the images. But, you know, if, you, if you're patient and you work your angles, then you can make it um, appear more, more natural and have more natural wood and not kind of uh, bu uh, building planks um, as such in your, in your frame. But, yeah, guys, that's, that's it. Uh, I'm still kind of a little bit lost for words on just how amazing our week in the Pantanal was. I think if you look at some of the photos that I've put at the at the bottom of the of the blog post, you'll, it'll just give you a kind of idea of you know some of the sightings that we had. It was truly spectacular, and it's definitely become one of my favorite destinations and safaris to go to. I just I was absolutely blown away and loved every minute of it. Now, unfortunately, our 2025 uh, scheduled safaris are fully booked. Um, so that, that booked out really, really quickly. But we are in the process of releasing two dates, two set of dates for 2026. Uh, one will be in August, one will be in September. We've got the dates already. We're just waiting for final rates, and then that will go on to our website. But if you guys would like to kind of join the wait list uh, and get first dibs at either of these two dates, Get in touch with us, and once those dates go live, we will then give you first option on either of the dates. It's going to sell out fast. It's an amazing safari experience, great photographic opportunities, and I think Jaguars might just be my new favorite subject to photograph. That's it for me. If you have any questions, give me a shout. Happy to answer, and um, yeah, feel free to leave some comments. Um, if you'd like to know anything more about the particular trip, Get in touch and we're more than happy to assist you with that. That's it from me for this one. Can't wait to get back to the Pantanal and um, yeah, special, special place. Till next time, cheers.